Sheikh, my question is, if a person is interested in learning um, Islamic politics and economy, like how the Islamic state should be structured, who the Muslim ruler is, how he should be uh, elected, and how to punish, and so much more according to the Sunnah. And he wants to learn, this person wants to learn more about them. So which are the best book that talks about the fiqh of politics and fiqh of economy if, that you would recommend if such fiqh and book exist? Okay, first of all, this is a little bit way above my pay grade. Because this requires someone who's specialized in these things. I have zero knowledge in politics and not that much adequate knowledge in economy. I have general idea about Islamic rulings and teachings. So there are classical books in the politics, uh, in ulum al sharia a siyas al sharia and how uh, to govern people and how to rule people. These are classical books. I did not go through them, so I cannot recommend any of them, but they're found there and available. And it requires you to read the Arabic versions. Probably you'll find some translated. I don't know how good the translations are, but it will benefit you a lot if you're doing this in your studies. Also, the Al uh, Muqaddimah uh, by Ibn Khaldun. This is something that a lot of the scholars have praised in having some or a lot of good ideas related to Islamic history. As for economics, you must do the classical fiqh to study the economics from the Quran, the Sunnah perspective, according to the favorite three generations. Nowadays, Islamic economy, unfortunately, is based on picking and choosing. A lot of these Sharia boards members or people who work in there are professionals. And instead of trying to find what is the best according to the Quran and the Sunnah, they collect all what has been said throughout history in the books of fiqh, regardless if it is baseless or based on something. It's just there in one of the Hanafi books. It was just there in one of the, the Maliki books. It's a coat. They just grab it and they put it in cards and they uh, uh, flashcards and they start to look into today's current economical systems, how they trade, credit cards, transactions, hedging, uh, uh, um, uh, betting, uh, margins, etc. Everything. Loans and, and, and the likes. Bonds. They look all at, at these things and they look at their flashcards. Trying to see something that may coincide and fit. So they say, oops, okay, we found this in a Shafi'i book. Who said this? X, Y, Z. What's the reference to it? I don't know. It's a Shafi'i. Uh, uh, school of thought. So because it's in one of the books of fiqh, so this opinion is there, we can follow that. Okay, what does the Quran and Sunnah say? Regardless, we have something to follow. Unfortunately, this is how the vast majority, the vast, not all of them, this is how they work, and this is how they get their bonuses, and this is how they're getting paid a lot, because they are twisting, not breaking the laws, they're bending the rules a little bit. And we have a quote from XYZ scholar who said this. And this scholar is maybe six or seven generations after Abu Hanifa or after Imam Malik. But it's there in the books. So unfortunately, this is un Islamic. You have to go to the Islamic references, study the Quran and Tafsir, study the authentic hadith and what the uh, uh, scholars have said about the hadith. And their understanding of it, with the understanding of the three favorite generations, then you will formulate your own knowledge about this science. Once you explore Islamic economy or other economies, you can relate to that and Allah knows best.